Welcome back. We are still on the topic statistics. In the previous video, we learned how to find the quartiles, deciles, and percentiles of a given distribution from a cumulative frequency curve. In this video, we are going to learn how to find the quartiles of a set of numbers. Quartiles of a set of numbers. To find the quartiles of a set of numbers, First, arrange the numbers in ascending order of magnitude. So the numbers must be arranged in ascending order of magnitude. That is from the smallest to the highest. After that, find the middle number of the set of numbers. The middle number will give you the middle quartile or the median. After finding the middle number, you will see that the middle number divides the set of numbers into two equal parts. The first part and the second part. The middle number of the first part will give you the first or lower quartile. And the middle number of the second part will give you the third or upper quartile. Let's apply this to solve some questions. Let's consider this question. Given the set of numbers 42, 27, 28, 65, 73, 66, 87, 23, 13, 10, 12. Find the I, first quartile, II, middle quartile, and III, the third quartile. The first thing we have to do here is to arrange the numbers in ascending order of magnitude. That is from the smallest to the highest. The smallest number here is 10, followed by 12, 13, 23, 27, 28, 42, 65, 66, 73, and 87. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 numbers in total. When we divide this set of numbers into two equal parts, we can see that we have 5 on the left and 5 on the right. And the number in the middle is 28. So the middle number is 28, which means that the middle quartile or the median is 28. As you can see, after dividing the number into two equal parts, we have the first part, which is 10, 12, 13, 23, and 27. We have learned that the middle number of the first part will give us the first or the lower quarter. The first part is 10, 12, 13, 23, 27. We have 5 in total. So you have 2 to the left and 2 to the right. And we can see that the middle number is 13. So it means that the first quartile is 13, because 13 is the middle number of the first part. The second part is 42, 65, 67, 73, 87. We have five of them. You have two to the left and two to the right. The middle number there is 66. The middle number of the second part will give us the third quartile. So it means that the third quartile is 66. Let's try another question. Given the set of numbers 16, 16, 3, 6, 3, 8, 10, 14, 19, 24, find the first quartile, the middle quartile, and the third quartile. The first thing we have to do is to arrange the numbers in ascending order, so from the smallest to the highest. When we do that, we are going to have 3, 3, 6, 8, 10, 14, 16, 16, 19, and then 24. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They are 10 in total. So when we divide them into two equal parts, we have 5 on the left and 5 on the right. As you can see, when we divide them into two equal parts, 
we don't have one number in the middle. This is because the middle is occupied 10 and 14. So the middle quarter or the median will be equal to the sum of these two numbers divided by 2. So 10 plus 14 divided by 2 and this will give us 12. So it means that the middle quarter is 12. After dividing the set of numbers into two equal parts, we can see that we have 5 to the left. That will give us the first part. 3, 3, 6, 8, 10. The middle number of the first part will give us the first quarter. The first part, we have five numbers in total. The middle number will be six. So it means that the first quarter or the lower quarter is six. The second part, we have 14, 16, 16, 19, 24. We have five in total. So when we divide it into two equal parts, we have two to the left, two to the right. The middle number there is 16. The middle number of the second part will give us the third or the upper quartile. So it means that the third or the upper quartile is 16. Let's consider another question. Given the set of numbers 4, 8, 5, 6, 13, 11, 15, 15, 20, find the first quartile, the middle quartile, and the, the third quartile. As we've been doing all along, we will arrange the numbers in ascending order. That is from the smallest to the highest. When we do that, we are going to have 4, 5, 6, 8, 11, 13, 15, another 15, and then 20. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in total. When we divide it into two equal parts, we have 4 to the left and 4 to the right. We have one number in the middle, so it means that that number will be the middle quarter or the median. So the middle quarter or the median is 11. When we divide the numbers into two equal parts, we can see that the first part will be 4, 5, 6, 8. The middle number of the first part will give us the first quarter. The first part is having four numbers. So when we divide it into two, we can see that we have two to the left and two to the right. We don't have one number in the middle. This is because the middle is occupied by five and six. So the first quarter will be the sum of five and six divided by two. We have 5 plus 6 divided by 2, which will give us 5.5. .5. So it means that the first quartile or the lower quartile is 5.5. .5. The third quartile or the upper quartile will be the middle number of the second part. The second part is 13, 15, 15, 20. We have 4 in total. So when we divide it into 2, we have 2 to the left and 2 to the right. There is no number in the middle. This is because the middle is occupied by 15 and 15. So the third quartile or the upper quartile will be the sum of 15 and 15 divided by 2. 15 plus 15 divided by 2 gives us 15. So it means that the third quartile or the upper quartile is 15. With the examples that we've considered so far, I'm sure that you can find the first or the lower quartile, the middle quartile or the median, and the third quartile or the upper quartile of a given set of numbers. In the introductory video to statistics, these are the objectives that we began with. We said that we are going to learn how to construct a grouped or an ungrouped frequency distribution table for a given data. We've done that. We said we are going to learn how to represent a given statistical data graphically. We've done that. We've learned how to draw a bar chart, pie chart, histogram, and cumulative frequency curve. We also said we are going to learn how to find measures of central tendencies for a given data. We've done that. We've learned how to find the mean, the median, and the mode. And we have also learned how to find the quartiles, the deciles, and then the percentiles. We are left with the last part, which is the 
measures of central tendencies. So in the subsequent videos, we are going to learn how to find the measures of central tendencies for a given data. The ones we are going to consider are the range, the interquartile range, the semi-interquartile range, the mean deviation, the standard deviation, and then the variance. In the next video, we will begin with the range, interquartile range, and the semi-interquartile range. So in the next video, we are going to learn how to find the range, the interquartile range, and the semi-interquartile range for a given data. Bye-bye.